Welcome compadres. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate the joint and fastener stiffness of a blind hole. So you can see here, here's a typical joint configuration. You have a washer, a top flange, a bottom flange, and you have a screw holding these things together and then you have an external load trying to separate these joints apart. So why do we want to determine the joint and fastener stiffness of a blind hole? Well, from a structural perspective, we need to do this so that we can determine the amount of external load transfer to the fastener and joint members. This will allow us to calculate or determine if our fastener is going to slip. If this fastener slips or the joints slip, that means our fastener will take the shear load, which is not a good thing. We also use this approach to determine if the fastener or the joint is going to separate. If the joint separates, then that means the fastener will take all the tensile load, which is not a good thing. We also use this to help us determine fastener fatigue margins and also to specify the amount of torque we need or preload to keep the joint and fasteners from slipping and separating. So the first thing we typically do is we calculate a screw stiffness. We treat the unthreaded length and the threaded length as springs in series. And really what we do is we apply this frustrum method. The frustrum method basically is just a conical cone and you have these segments in here they call frustrums which we calculate member stiffnesses for. But what's important about this approach is this grip length right here. So the stress distribution is modeled over a certain length and it doesn't always extend the whole length of the screw and so we're really only concerned about calculating the stiffnesses within this grip length in which the stress distribution is assumed to be acting across. So you can see here we don't necessarily calculate the stiffness of the entire length of the threaded length because it doesn't fall with this portion down here does not fall within the grip length. So just keep that in mind um, as we move forward and we can calculate the unthreaded length stiffness and the threaded length stiffness using these equations right here uh, where the area of our threaded portion is modeled with this equation uh, which is pretty reliable for unified coarse threads. The member stiffness is determined with this equation right here which is going to be a direct reflection of our frustrum shape right here. So each portion we calculate a stiffness for and we calculate each stiffness within the grip length. And you can see over here we may have to calculate multiple stiffnesses across a joint member just depending on where this mid span falls. So for this top flange we'd have to calculate two stiffnesses for the bottom flange one stiffness. And so to calculate the stiffness we use these terms right here on the conical cone. This top length right here, big D, the thickness of the frustrum and also the nominal diameter of the screw. And we use an alpha angle here from the frustrum which can fall between like 20 and 45 degrees depending on what you're, what you're doing but that's essentially what we use to calculate the stiffness of a frustrum. So for example we can see over here we have a frustrum across the washer and a frustrum across the top flange. Uh, to calculate these we'd use this equation. Um, the first stiffness of the washer would essentially just be the um, top diameter here. So if you started at the uh, end of the screw head you'd use that diameter and then the thickness T1 and then an alpha and you can calculate the stiffness. 
for the second portion here, we have to use a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so we want to determine the length right here. In order to do that, we essentially just use um, calculate the uh, the small length of this right triangle. So we take the angle alpha, we multiply it by t1, and since we have two sides, we multiply it by two, and then we add it to our d right here. And that gets us d2. And then we start from the reverse side after we calculated the stiffnesses of this four, first midway portion and we start from the bottom and we do the same procedure. Once we've done that, calculated the member stiffnesses and the unthreaded and threaded portion stiffnesses, we can then calculate an effective stiffness of the bolt using just the springs and series analogy and also the effective stiffness of the members using a springs and series analogy. And I just want to emphasize that the member and the bolt stiffnesses can be modeled as springs in parallel as shown here only if there's enough preload. So if the external load extent exceeds the preload, the joint members will uh, separate and uh, will no longer be able to do this type of analysis. Um, but if as long as the preload is greater than the external load, we can treat it as springs in parallel as shown here because um, any deflection, um, the bolt and the members will deflect by the same amount. Hence the springs in, series, springs in parallel analogy. So as long as the members and the bolt are clamped enough, um, we can calculate the percentage of the load transferred to the fastener just using the springs in parallel analogy. It's simply going to be the stiffness of the bolt over the total stiffness of the bolt and the member. And then the percentage of the load transferred to the member is just going to be 1 minus the uh, ratio right here. And I just want to emphasize that the frustrum can change. Um, for example, uh, in the previous analysis, um, we can see that we have to calculate stiffnesses, two stiffnesses for the top flange. We have to calculate this area right here and this area down here. But sometimes um, the frustrum can extend beyond the top flange. And so we'd see here we calculate one stiffness for the washer, one for the top flange, two for the bottom flange. So we have to build a little bit of logic in our code when we go to the Excel spreadsheet, which I'm going to go talk about now. So to calculate the joint member stiffness using the frustrum method, these are some inputs you'd want to put in for your bolt. You want to put in the nominal diameter, the Young's modulus, the length of the threaded portions, length of the unthreaded portion, threads per inch, and also um, in this example we have a helicoil which I'm going to model as the thickness of the bottom flange. And then for the joint member stiffness you're going to need things like your screw head diameter. That's where we're going to start our frustrum at and then the washer thickness, the top flange thickness, and then the modulus is for the washer, top flange, and bottom flange, and then the alpha angle that you're projecting the frustrum. So to calculate the bolt stiffness, um, we first want to determine the effective grip length, which you can find in Shigley's book. As you can see here, um, this is the effective grip length that was determined. Um, essentially it uses some logic here. You can go look it up in the book. But that's the VBA code I'm using. I'm using effective grip. And then we want the determine the areas and the stiffnesses uh, for the threaded and unthreaded portion. So for the unthreaded portion, 
uh, we just use the nominal diameter of the screw. In this case, we're using a number two fastener. And then we use, um, we calculate our axial stiffness using AE over L. You can see here, um, in this case, uh, for this number two fastener, um, there is no unthreaded portion. And um, you have to put in some logic here uh, because this function will spit out an error if you don't. Um, so you say, uh, because the length would be zero. So if error, that does a good job. It returns zero if it finds an error with this function, which is what I want. And then this is the area of the threaded portion. You can find this in Norton's book. So um, it takes the uh, one of the things it takes into account is the number of threads per inch as shown here, 56 for the number two screw. And then you can calculate your axial stiffness. In this case, um, we're taking our area and then our elastic modulus of the um, fastener and then we're taking um, the effective grip length minus the unthreaded portion up here. So just remember um, we take the unthreaded portion in the grip length and then we calculate a bolt stiffness using our springs and series analogy using this equation. And then for the member sniffness, we use our frustrum method to do that. So I wrote a VBA code for that. It's going to take into, uh, a lot of things in here. I mean, just uh, a lot of things. Um, it's going to take the nominal screw diameter, uh, the screw head diameter uh, right here, um, where our frustrum starts, and then the associated thicknesses for each member. As shown here, and then uh, our Young's modulus, and so we spit out a bunch of stiffnesses, and then we calculate um, the uh, using the springs in series analogy to calculate a member stiffness. So this should be M. So you can see we calculate our bolt stiffness and our member stiffness and then we determine the amount of load that the fastener would take if there was an external load applied to the joint member. It's simply just this ratio right here. So in this case our fastener would be taking 28.8% of the load and those are the inputs and then we say 1 minus C, our members, such as our washer and our top flange and bottom flange, would be taking 71.2% of the load. So let's just step into the code for a second. So to calculate the joint member stiffness, I wrote this VBA function right here. Its inputs are the following, the nominal diameter of the screw, the screw head diameter where the frustrum starts, the thickness of the washer, the thickness of the upper flange, and then the effective grip length L, which is determined up here with this logic, uh, which can be found in Shigley's book. And then uh, the angle of the frustrum. So what I, how I set it up is I create an array of uh, that will return four stiffnesses. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the stiffness of the washer um, right here. This function does that. I use that a big long equation of the member stiffness right here that we saw back in uh, the slides. And then essentially I calculate the uh, total thickness of the top flange and the washer. And this is kind of the uh, this, this beginning point of the logic. So there's two cases that can happen um, as shown over here. We can have the case where the uh, frustrum 
the mid span of the frustrum uh, falls between uh, the top flange only. Um, so you'd have to calculate two stiffnesses for the top flange. Or you could have this case where the mid span of the grip falls or exceeds the top flange thickness. And so in that case, you'd have to calculate two stiffnesses for the bottom flange. So that's the two cases, and it really just depends on whether the, the uh, half of the grip length exceeds or falls within the top flange. So if the um, mid-span of the grip uh, falls between the top flange, uh, then we go ahead and calculate two upper member stiffnesses as shown here. Essentially, uh, we calculate uh, D2. So that's this case right here. D2, start here, and then we calculate the stiffness down to here. And then we reverse it and calculate D3, and we calculate the stiffness up to the midpoint here. So that's what that section of code does. And then we calculate a lower member stiffness. So if the upper half of the frustum extends into the bottom flange, then we just calculate one upper member stiffness and then a lower member stiffness, two lower member stiffnesses. And so once we have that, um, we can uh, essentially assign those stiffnesses to our array. And then we can return that as an answer, transposing it to turn it into a column. So that's how that's done. Um, so some additional code used in the spreadsheet is springs in series. Um, I use that right here uh, for the member stiffnesses, springs in series. It essentially just takes an array of our stiffnesses right here and it adds them together and takes the inverse and spits out the value for the effective member stiffness. So pass an array and then it sums them up and it takes the inverse, that's all that does. So another piece of code used in this analysis was the bolt stiffness function. Essentially what this did is it calculated the uh, stiffness of the bolt using the unthreaded and threaded portions of the bolt. You can see here uh, we can run into some problems if any of these stiffnesses are zero, which in this case it was because our unthreaded portion had no length, so we didn't have an unthreaded stiffness here. So this logic goes through and essentially what it does is if the threaded portion stiffness is equal to zero it just returns the unthreaded stiffness else if the unthreaded stiffness is zero it returns just the threaded stiffness and if both stiffnesses are real then it takes the spring of the series analogy and calculates an effective stiffness so that's how that was done so um, this stuff is very important for aerospace applications. Uh, I definitely code something in like this, similar to what I did here. It'll make your life a lot easier, and you'll be able to work a little bit quicker. So I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.